One of the things about um, the CPD sessions that I do with teachers is I try to model low threshold, high ceiling, mm -hmm. meaning an activity that pretty well everybody in the class would be able to do, but which has the possibility to actually go to some quite sophisticated maths mm -hmm. without changing the content. So it's changing the sophistication of the thinking rather than changing the amount of new knowledge that they need to learn. So this is an activity which um, is called Magic Vs and it's taken from the Enrich website. Can you tell me something that is the same about both of them? They've all, both got a number five on the top They've right Both hand. got a number five on the top right and hand. And a three hand. at the base. Both got a three at the base. And the two's in the same position. Mm -hmm. And the two's in the same position. Okay. They are the numbers one to five. They're all the numbers one to five. There's a sort of stepped effect as you go. Stepped through. effect. So if I add those, that's six and six, I have those, that's nine and three. But the total of all of them together should be the same. So you were looking at adding the rows? Yes. And you said the rows are different, but the total of all five numbers is the same. Numbers, mm -hmm. the same. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, and I guess that if we spent another two or three minutes, perhaps we could see quite a lot of other things that are the same. Some of them may be trivial like the fact that they're all on yellow paper, mm -hmm. etc. But some of them will be quite pertinent about, so in this particular pair, the five and the two and the three are in the same place. Okay. So one of the things, therefore, that you might say that's different about these two is that the four and the one are in different places. Mm -hmm. Could you tell me something else that's different about these two? The totals, if you mm -hmm. add them yeah. down, mm -hmm. they are different. Explain that. If I add five, four and three, it's not the same as five, one and three. Okay, so this is 5, 4, 3, mm -hmm. that's 12, mm -hmm. and that's 9, um, yeah. Nine or 6? Sorry, I'm six. looking, okay. Okay. sorry, I'm comparing yeah. that to that. Oh, right, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Yes, right, so this one's yeah. 12 and that one's 9, nine. and that nine. one's 9, so they're both the same. Nine. Okay, and so the, when, what's both the same? The total, if I add them along the diagonal. It's the same if I go that way okay. or that way. And this is the one I like. Yeah. And I like this, I'm calling this a magic V. Uh -huh. So magic V is one where the numbers along one arm mm -hmm. add up to the same as the numbers mm -hmm. along another arm. Okay? So that's an example of a magic V. So what I'd like to know is, is that the only possible magic V using those five numbers? Okay, so I'll give you those, Pauline, and Joanna, there's a little set there for you. We're just looking to rearrange these numbers so that two arms add up to the same number. And in class, I might do this as pairs. I might give children a chance to work by themselves, first of all, and then to share their findings with their partner. Okay, so would you like to have a look at everybody else's? Is there anything the same about them or anything that's different about them? Yours is different to ours because, because uh, uh, even though they're in a different position, they are the same numbers that we've used in the same. Okay, mm -hmm. so there's some talk there about Joanna's is the same as yours. Mm -hmm. well, we could say it's the same, we could say it's different, but maybe we choose to say it's the same because it's got a one at the bottom and it's got four and three on one arm mm -hmm. and five and two on another arm. And the children will work with this. They may decide that if I swap those two over, that was a different magic V. Mm -hmm. But after some discussion, I hope that I would be able to um, convince them that actually it's the same, okay? Uh, as it would be if I swapped those over, okay? So, so far, I think we've got two different magic Vs. We've got one with the one at the bottom over there, and we've got one with the three at the bottom here, but I think that this one and this one are essentially the same. Mm -hmm. So my question now is, so are there only two magic Vs? Say that again, that's not going to work. That's not going to How work. How did you know? Because I knew that four and three is seven and five and one is six, okay. so that, that couldn't work. Okay. need a piece of paper to see what the original one was. <laughs> That's fine. That's, fine. That's, That's how piece I came to do the same thing. Have a piece of paper. Okay. Joanne, do you want to record this yes. in some way?
Now we're doing this in absolute silence, aren't we? Which means that actually what I'm forcing you to do is to sort of be in competition with each other. Yeah? So Joanna's now finished and um, is sitting there and there's a bit of pressure on you two now because she's put her pen down and mm. she's finished it. So that's, mm. that's not such a nice feeling. So when I work with, with teachers, sometimes I'll have half of the class working on their own set but I'll have the other half of the, the group working in pairs. And then one of the things we talk about is what are those different ways of working? Because one half of the group is working actually in silence or perhaps muttering under their breath. Mm -hmm. But the other half, once they've got over the, the idea that they can talk, it starts to be a very different cooperative thing. Okay. So Joanna, would you like to just talk us through the three that you've got? Okay. Um, I've got one here with a five at the bottom mm -hmm. and then these other numbers I've split into two pairs, which make five. Mm -hmm. um, or I've got a three at the bottom, and then I've done it so these both make six. Um, or I've got a one at the bottom, and these ones add up to seven. Now, you didn't move those just randomly. You had a very yeah. clear idea of what you were going to do. So can you yeah. tell us... Did you discover something, or did you, have you seen this before, or how I, did you know to do that? I worked out that if if this number at the bottom is odd, mm -hmm. then because then what's left will add up to an even total, so I can split that into half. Whereas if this bottom number was even, I'd be left with an odd total, so I couldn't split that into half. So I chose to use the odd numbers, um, and then when I had my other numbers, I took the biggest one and the smallest one, and then the other two, mm -hmm. and that worked. Mm -hmm. So, are you convinced of, about Joanna's explanation? About the odd numbers at the bottom? Yes. Mm -hmm. so, so, Pauline, you just heard what Joanna said. Could you now say what Joanna said, but in your own words, to Joyce? What Joanna has said is that the numbers have got to add up to the same. If, there's, if you want to end up with the same numbers and you have numbers here, to get an even number, you're going to have to have... Oh, I've lost this now. You're going to have to have something whereby this is an odd number which adds to each of those. OK. Would it be helpful to know what the numbers all added up to? What do they all add up to? 50. 50. Mm. Mm. Okay. So they add up to 15. Mm. So, Joanna, do you, want to, do you want to say that again? And then I'm going to ask Pauline to say, to say again. Because what you said was fine, but it wasn't as clear as... No, it wasn't, no. OK, so the total of these numbers mm. is 15. Mm -hmm. um, and this number is being counted both ways. Right. So I can sort of ignore it when I'm working out what to mm -hmm. do here, mm -hmm. as long as what I'm left with here is, adds up to an even number. Because if this adds up to an even number, I can split it into two halves. Mm -hmm. If it adds up to an odd number, I can't. Um, and because the total is 15, this one has to be odd to leave these four being even. So once I've taken my odd number, I've got an even number left, and I need to divide that by two. So here they add up to 14, so this one will add up to 7, and this one will add up to 7. And then add the one, they make 8. Right. I know that the total of these numbers all together will be 15, which is an odd number. So I know if I have this number here as an odd number, because it's going, this is going to be in both of them, I'm going to need a pair of even numbers here and here. If I want them to be equivalent, if I look at the order of these numbers and I start with the highest and lowest and add the total of those, and then the two in the middle and add the total of those, that's going to give me the same and then I add this because this is common. But that's quite a nice technique to ask somebody mm. to repeat mm. back in their own words mm. what somebody else said. 